In the long history of mankind, there has never been a war which has demanded such complex tactics and so many sophisticated weapons as the war in Vietnam. An entirely new concept of warfare, known as Helleborn, or air mobile operations, has been developed by the United States Army and has been successfully employed to meet the problems posed by Southeast Asia's hostile wilderness and the enemy who hides there. In the fluid situation where actions are fought from one end of South Vietnam to the other, the air mobile concept has given birth to the Army Air Mobility Team. The first thing that the Army had to overcome in Vietnam was the terrain itself. Approximately 80% of the country is undeveloped wilderness, or in the southern part of the Republic, endless marshes, bogs, and waterways of the Mekong Delta. All of the land features which are unfavorable to a modern, highly mechanized fighting force are used by the Viet Cong as a weapon against the American military effort there. Seeking out the elusive, hidden enemy, U.S. troops are daily confronted by nightmarish natural obstacles. Even at close range, the Viet Cong remain unseen. The full power of our army cannot be brought to bear upon the enemy through ground operations alone. American fighting men inch their way into the Asian wilderness where the enemy has prepared underground fortresses and has entrenched himself for decades. The attack spirit of our troops is frustrated and progress is limited. A speedier, more effective method of getting at the Viet Cong and North Vietnamese army forces had to be found. Traditionally, the need for ground movement by the army is vital. Troops are still deployed on a massive scale on wheels and treads in Vietnam, and the final victory must be won on the ground. In order to move quickly over difficult ground and to put the firepower where it's needed, the army developed the air mobile concept. This concept requires that Army aircraft be employed by and assigned to the fighting division. These aircraft and the men that fly them are immediately responsive and solely committed to support of the ground commander. For overland transport, the Army still needs its workhorse vehicles, ambulances and various types of armored war machines. These are the tools of the ground force elements of the air mobility team. In the air mobile divisions, many of these ground vehicles are replaced by helicopters, which carry the men and equipment of the team. How the air mobility team system works is demonstrated in a battalion sized operation to search out and clear away known enemy forces. Advanced reconnaissance is the first step for any planned attack. In air mobility operations, this advanced scouting is usually done from the air. Light fixed wing aircraft look for areas near suspected enemy positions, which will provide a suitable landing zone for the waves of assault troops, which will soon be coming in. To determine enemy strength in the area, helicopters are sent in for a closer examination of the ground. From intelligence reports and the information gathered by air reconnaissance operations, pilots and air mobile officers are briefed on the mission which lies ahead. From day to day, Helleborn missions vary so much that these briefings must be extremely accurate. 
Ground commanders are also given the latest information on the operation. The operation begins when the infantry soldiers load aboard the assault Hueys to fly to the strike objective. The air mobile team concept is designed with the idea that the airborne soldier must ultimately fight on foot. Every effort is made to keep small units together on the same aircraft. A combat company's mortars and machine guns are divided among several aircraft, however, so that the loss of one or two helicopters would not knock out all the company's heavy weapons. Troops are seated in each attack helicopter so that the first man off will be an automatic weapons man. If necessary, he will provide a heavy volume of fire to cover the offloading of the rest of his squad. The aerial deployment of assault troops may call for some modification of normal leadership tactics. On the ground, the company commander will be up forward. However, in the air like this, the command and control ship may well be the last one in formation. This gives the troop commander a clear view of his entire unit and allows him to break out of formation without disrupting it. In air mobile operations such as the one now underway, the hilltops overlooking an enemy held valley are pounded by army artillery units to make way for the incoming waves of helicopters. Artillery fire is carefully coordinated with attacks directly upon enemy positions by tactical aircraft of the U.S. Air Force. The jets rain bombs into the valley to neutralize the enemy there. When the fighter-bomber attack is masked by the advance of the ground troops, the close support is continued by helicopter gunships. Helicopter gunships lay down suppressive fire with 2.75 rockets and machine guns when required. Using the position-marking rockets of the helicopter as a guide, the Air Force jets dart in with their heavy ordnance. The landings of the assault helicopters are the most critical phase of the operation. Despite the heavy preparatory fires, enemy small arms, automatic weapons, and mortar fire may be severe. The attacking airborne soldiers must be ready to engage the enemy immediately with every type of weapon. They also must deploy swiftly to push back or eliminate enemy forces which may be blocking expansion of the landing zone. The air mobility team system provides another great advantage for the assault troops. In addition to flexible rapid transport to meet any maneuver of the enemy, the U.S. infantrymen can be landed on key terrain, such as this high ground overlooking the valley. Known as vertical envelopment, this enables him to come in behind the enemy, whose prepared defenses are usually oriented to cover the ground below. As the initial landings are completed without resistance from the enemy, the men spread out quickly to secure the various landing zones. Thank you. 